I've always thought AJ beats Wilder. I've, from day one. Pro boxing fans here, your call with Tunde Ajay. Tunde Ajay, first of all, how are you, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see Dev Sani yeah. shadow boxing yesterday? <laughs> I told them private school. Private school. <laughs> I said, Dev, relax. <laughs> How you doing, my man? I'm good. First of all, uh, congratulations to yourself, to Joel, yes. who was uh, first out on this bill of uh, McCann versus Baluta. Yes. Um, comprehensive win. Yes, sir. Um, possibly should have been stopped, but you know that's a different discussion for a different day. Yes. But just talk to me about. Joel and how his progression is so far in your eyes. Yeah, well, as I, as I said yesterday, you know, uh, Joel's kind of speeding up because he, he had no amateur career. Again, only about 10 fights. Uh, and he's fighting opponents who, you know, prospects, national amateur champions are fighting. And uh, this is his first year. It'd be his first year as a professional in September. So I feel that, you know, I feel it's even good that he's not blowing them out, you know, in, a, in these first four fights, because sometimes that can give you a full sense of security. Uh, you have to learn the game, having no amateur experience, I, I think it's brilliant for him, because I mean, he's, he's not losing around, he's just boxing them and trying his, I guess he's trying his, his best to stop them, uh, but he's finding that professional boxing, it's an art, and, and I'm just, I'm so pleased with his um, performances thus far. Obviously someone that young, someone who's very new to, to the game, to the pro ranks, I'm sure there's going to be times where you just want to sort of reel him in, slowly go pace by pace. You know your fights are better than anyone else does, but it's just going to be a step-by-step -step journey with Joel, right? Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. You know, it's a, I, I've, I keep saying it that when someone has no amateur career and they are they're under the spotlight, it, it kind of makes it difficult, but as a trainer and a manager, it's my job to just take it step by step, watch his development, uh, monitor his development, and, and just go day by day, fight by fight. But yeah, it's, it's great. It's, he's, he's not really doing it. He's not, no, he's not doing anything wrong. But as we know, the biggest room is the room for improvement. Anthony Yard walked past then. Uh, let's talk about Anthony. We're still waiting for his return. Uh, what, what's the latest in regards to that? Uh, Anthony Yard will make his long-awaited return to the ring on uh, September the 23rd. Um, chief support to Joe Joyce and Zilly Zang, so I'm looking forward to it. Obviously a lot of talk about Anthony now fighting on the upper echelon, the top boys of that division, obviously putting a great performance against Arthur Betspeyev, who showed just to be a tough, rugged fighter, but how quickly do you want him back up there with the big boys? Well, for me, it's all about, and it has always been about, step by step, fight by fight. You know, um, the fight in January, in my opinion, was already the fight of the year. You know, because it was a, it was a seesaw, it was a back of, it was a, it was a hard fight for both men. You know, and for me, we don't know how much of an effect it had on Arthur Betterbeer. I can only go by what I've seen with Anthony, and um, and looks good, and looks he's fresh, he's ready, he's eager to get back in there. Uh, but as a trainer and a manager. I just want to see him back under the lights doing what I'm seeing in the gym and then we'll take it from there. Nice. Uh, I do want to actually get your thoughts on the fight. Obviously, Arthur Bespia fighting another British charge in Callum Smith. Yes. Do you feel like Anthony, that fight that he had with Anthony, has, uh, has put a little dent in order that Callum Smith can maybe capsulise? I'm not that. I'm not saying that Callum Smith's not a great fighter, but do you reckon there's that element to that fight? No, it's a very good question. It, I said it and I, I did read I don't really tend to read people's comments on, online, but when I said it, I saw people was like, okay, yeah, here, here Tundi goes again. But when Anthony fought Sergei Kovalev, so to go back in time, the fight after was Canelo Alvarez. And uh, you could clearly see that he hadn't recovered from the fight with Anthony. Now, we fast forward to Arthur Betterbeev. That was a fight and a half. And it could be, I'm not saying it is, it, it could be the same thing. We, don't, we, 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 we really won't know how much of an effect it had on Arthur until he fights Callum Smith. Same way, I need to see my fighter. I need to see how he um, fights on September the 23rd. It could be, it could be Callum Smith's um, 
uh, it, it could be good for Callum Smith. I watched him last night actually against Canelo, and uh, Callum is a solid fighter, very good boxer, uh, can punch, um, and I think maybe the Canelo fight was just it was just a big occasion, you know, for him. It could have been that because Callum Smith is a great fighter. And I'm really looking forward to that fight and seeing how he deals with the, the mental pressure of Arthur Betterbeev. Do you want to talk about boxing that's just happened? Anthony Joshua uh, against Robert Hellenius. Obviously, the situation with Dillian White being the situation with Dillian White, that's still ongoing right now. But I do want to uh, get a trainer's perspective on Anthony Joshua's performance. Yes. A lot of people uh, saying that, you know, pos you know, it was hesitation when he was in close. You know, he, he could have maybe finished it earlier. But in your eyes, Sunday, how did you see that fight? <laughs> and you know, you know what makes me laugh? A lot of these people always, always say they sense this hesitation and, and he was gun shy and everything. I'm like, none of these guys have boxed. <laughs> you can't say it. Like, none of them ain't been in there. None of them has not walked in this young man's shoes. And uh, I think, as a trainer and a manager and a, 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 of, a, of, a, of a world class fighter, I know that Anthony Joshua shouldn't be worrying about what other people are saying. From my perspective, and I might get gunned for this, I think it was a good performance. <laughs> I think that he took his time. He used his jab, he followed orders. You can see he's obviously he's in the process of downloading new information. And uh, what a finish. It's like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, what more are people, this is why you can't listen to people. You know, when you're a man on a mission, you stay focused. And you don't look left, you don't look right. You just think about the progression within yourself as a fighter. And me, from a trainer's perspective, after our cup, we done the wash along, the fight is right. Plug, plug, myself and Spencer Fearon. Uh, Spencer was at the fight because he's a celeb, and you know, I'm just <laughs> Mr. Tundi doing a watch along. Uh, but when I watched it the next day, you know, with the sound, with the commentary, and from a trainer's perspective, I actually thought it was a very, very good performance. Better than the last, and that's what it's about. The biggest room is the room for improvement. It was better than the Franklin fight. So, in, his, in Joshua's mind, having knocked out Hellenius in the fashion he did, I can only see that as a great thing and a, and a confidence builder for him. Now let me ask you, about three years ago there was this talk about the Wilder fight. AJ ended up fight, fighting Ruiz and we know what happened in that first fight. Back then, three years ago, AJ was a lot more raw, a lot more ruthless in range. Do you think three years down the line, um, with his change in style, that if he does face Wilder in January, that potentially it's a tougher fight for Wilder than it was maybe three years ago with the, with the change in style? A tougher fight? A different type of fight for Wilder. So mm. someone who's people are saying ages, boxing skills are better, uh, become better over the last couple of fights or however long. Uh, but I just want your opinion on that. Do you think that it's going to be a, a tougher fight for Wilder, or do you think it's going to be a different fight now? One of the reasons why I don't really give that much interviews no more, <laughs> because when I talk, I just get I get slaughtered. Because okay. my opinion is always different to everybody else. The only I, reason I ask you is because you're a trainer. You yeah, know yeah, boxing I, better I than see, more, more than I most see of us. Different. And me and Anthony Yard and others in the gym always have this argument. I've always thought AJ beats Wilder. I've, from day one, whether it's three years ago, five years ago. Because I'm still, you, you just got to look at the resumes. That's how I'm, I'm viewing all of this. I'm looking at the resumes. How many world champions has Deontay Wilder knocked out? How many has he fought? You look at to, to AJ's resume. It's a better resume on paper. Now, if you look at it stylistically, again, we haven't, we don't know the 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 the, the, the fundamental thing I feel is going to play a part in this fight is the inactivity in Deontay Wilder. He's only boxed two minutes fifty. You see, so inactivity is going to be a major factor in this fight. The longer Deontay's out, I feel that benefits. Anthony Joshua more. Maybe Anthony Joshua can get another fight in. Activity plays a big role and I think stylistically uh, Anthony Joshua is a better boxer. Remember I think Anthony's, Anthony Joshua is knocked out 23 or, of, or 24 or 26. He can punch as well. He's not a, he's not a slouch and uh, I know people were talking about who lands first but I don't know. I still want to see Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder in a competitive fight, or at least a fight that goes a few rounds, 
after the trilogy with Tyson Fury. Because I, I, I'm again, I'm saying the same thing. Like we have to see how he is, how he responds to the punches coming. You know, uh, I mean, I can go on and on in the fight breakdown, but I ain't getting paid for that. So, <laughs> yeah. Final, final one before I let you go. Obviously, we've had some bad news. Bad news, obviously, in in boxing in general. We've had a few drug tests that have become public. Oh. Just give me your thoughts on the current state of boxing. It is the final question before yes. I go up to the media area, but just just give me your thoughts from there. It is it is very very sad, and it is a black eye for boxing. And, and of. The mad thing is, I just watched, I don't know whether you've seen it, no. the documentary on Netflix with Victor Conte. I haven't yet. You, I've need, been told to. you need to go and watch that documentary. To, and, and the thing is, after I watched that documentary on Netflix with Victor Conte, the news, I saw the news about um, uh, Elisa and all that. Oh my goodness gracious, not another one. And I'm not saying she's guilty yet, but again, it's another sad situation where someone's gonna have to prove their innocence but in the public's eye they're guilty before they're innocent. Jay, always a pleasure to talk to yourself once again congratulations to yourself and your team and uh, no doubt I'll speak to you very soon thank you very much thank Dr. Pro Boxer fans thank you.